All right, let's get it. It is June 15th-ish. It is 78 degrees out. We are in Kentucky, Zone 6B, and this is our June garden tour. Garden looking slick. What? The garden is looking really good. All right, we're just gonna like start on this side, work our way that way, and then hop over to the other one. I'm so excited about this. This is our wall of flowers and it's finally taking shape. So in the back we have sunflowers. These are the sunflowers that we had to replant like four times because they kept getting eaten by animals, mostly birds. Super annoying, but they're actually starting to take off. Look at those, those actually look a good size. So we got them all the way down to almost the end, but not quite. In front, we have our zinnia. This is our zinnia, save from seeds, save from seeds, save from years of seed saving of zinnia. And uh, they look amazing. So we don't know what they're gonna look like, but we already have a couple blooms. First bloom, <gasps> and it's so pretty. It's orange and it's beautiful and I love it. Uh, I don't know if you remember, we topped all these, so they are looking super bushy and nice. Here's another one. This is about to be just like a wall of colors, a riot of colors. It's gonna be so awesome. Last garden tour, which was actually the end of the month, so it wasn't even a whole month ago. This looks like pretty much nothing, but now you can see the vision of how it's gonna fill out. These are our summer squash. So some of them are zucchini and some of them are yellow, and I'm not really sure which is which. I haven't decided what we're putting in the empty holes. I don't know if we're gonna succession plant the squash to try to give us uh, extra chances against the squash bugs, or if I should just put something like pretty in it. More flowers, I love flowers. Lots of flowers everywhere. And a bunch of nasturtiums that kind of need a home. Oof. So you can see this guy, like the amount of growth on this in just a couple few weeks has been like crazy. And they will get to be, I don't know, like five, almost six feet in diameter, which is, and they get huge. So maybe I won't put anything in those other holes. This takes us to the green beans. So many green beans. They are doing so well. Especially up this way. Oh my goodness. We should have plenty of green beans. My goal is to can enough for all year and I'm hoping that maybe we hit that goal. Here are our peppers, eggplants, and basil. We ended up buying some pepper plants from the store just because starting pepper plants has always been an issue for me um, because they like it warm. Our seed starting situation is not ideal. Hoping to work on that, but we're just doing, improve a little bit each year in what areas you can. So there's no shame in buying some plants. We bought some pepper plants. And they've already made peppers. This is like, what? So we have bell peppers, um, some jalapenos. Honestly, I'm not even sure. I really don't know. I guess we're gonna find out when they grow. More. Look at them, they're so cute. Those are the cutest little peppers. Yep, there's a jalapeno over there. So while we did buy some, we also started some seeds. These were direct seeded here, as were all the ones over here. I think we've almost done like succession planting, not on purpose. I also started some peppers over in a pot in case we needed extras, which it turns out we do. There's a few holes where the seeds did not come up. Here are our eggplants. We only have two plants. They're having a little bit of a rough go of it, but they're still here, they're hanging on. I think I'm gonna cover them with some netting. We actually got netting for all the cabbages and that's another, it's another something we're working on. So for these, we have more direct seeded peppers. Some of them are doing, I think they're doing pretty good. I'm impressed because I didn't even think they were gonna come up. <laughs> and then a couple more store-bought ones. These look like serranos and some more bell peppers. And then over here we have basil. I only started like 5,000 basil, basil. I only started like 5,000 basil plants. Still working out what to do with the rest of them. But these are ones that I went ahead and put out here, which was like one one thousandth of what we planted. But this is a lot of basil anyway, so. Really quickly, I'll tell you what's in the pots. These pots are scattered throughout the garden and they are sage. I had sage planted in the garden before we redid the garden this year. We don't really know where we wanna put uh, perennial herbs and vegetables, so they just went into pots and they're sitting there. 
while I'm back over here. Some of our zinnia out here were not doing very good. So this, some of them rebounded. This one was not doing well and it has rebounded and looks good. Some of them, I don't, I don't know. We, we're gonna pull some of these and replace because I have bazillions of zinnia plants. So we're gonna replace some of those. I find it interesting that the further away from the house you get, kind of the worse the plants are getting. I wonder if it's partially the sun or if it's partially just, you know, the water's over there. <laughs> my attention's over there. When I start weeding, I start over there. So by the time I get down here, I feel like they're just not as, they're just not as well looked after probably as the ones that are closer to the house. So that le leads credence to the fact that you should put your garden near your house. Because if they were all the way back there, pff, forget about it. Tomatoes. We bought these tomato plants. We have started them from seed in the past this year. We did not, and that is fine. So we always put them now, we didn't always in the past, but now we do always put them on a fence. It's the best way to grow them. It's the only way they don't flop over. It's the only way they don't have problems for us. You can do whatever you want, obviously, but for us, fence. So we have T-posts, T-posts, fence, and then just attach them with these little doohickeys. And they're doing really well, except for like two of them. That one needs to be replaced. I am not sure what we have. Bo has it written in his phone what each tomato plant is. I don't know. I'll, it's gonna be a surprise for me when they start producing. So we do have the fence up kind of high and then try to keep them pruned, to keep them off the ground. We're just weaving them through or if they need a little bit of help, I would tie them. Although they aren't growing tomatoes quite yet, they have flowers on them. So it will be soon and actually, oh my gosh, look, ah, baby tomato. It's almost tomato time. I'm so excited. I love, I love tomatoes. Everyone does. They're mm. more sage. All right. So here I have lettuce and um, look at how well it is doing compared to the last garden tour. This all looked dead, dead as dead can be because when I transplanted it, it was, it was a rough transplant, but it has all sprung back. It's growing. I don't know what kind of lettuce it is. General theme, I don't know what I planted. Ah, I just started it from seed. I want to eat some of it at the same time. I think it looks pretty, so I don't want to eat it. This is also a problem right now. I'm like, but it looks so nice. I don't want to pick it and eat it. Okay, as for this fence, these are all cucumbers. So many cucumbers. We really want pickles. We want a lot of pickles. We're upset that we haven't had pickles thus far, so we're making sure that no matter what, we're getting pickles this year. Part of it is that it, when I had even like two plants, I would get like a cucumber here or there, and then it didn't add up to much this way. I can make sure that I can come out and I'm pretty sure I'll be able to pick a whole bunch and make pickles. We actually bought like the first three plants here and then everything else was just from seed and it's really not that big of a difference. So those are the ones we got from the store. And then like starting here are the ones we got from seed. So many cucumbers. All right, so this has been very exciting for me. Cabbages. I've only had one year where I successfully grew cabbages started in the spring. And this year I definitely did not think that we would get any because I started them so late and it gets so incredibly hot so early. But for whatever reason this year, we've had like spring weather. It has not been a hundred degrees like every day. So I'm actually getting cabbages. I have two types planted, the Chinese cabbage and then red cabbage. The Chinese cabbage is growing a lot easier than the red cabbage. And obviously it's growing a lot faster. I mean, look at this. They make me so happy. Look at this. Oh, oh, it's so good beautiful cabbage after cabbage after cabbage. Whereas the red cabbages are just starting to like head up. I don't know if we'll get red cabbage, honestly, because it is starting to get warm, but the Chinese cabbage has definitely done a great job. This is, we'll be growing this again. This concludes the portion of the garden that has weed mat. By the way, this is like night and day from last year. The weed mat has made such an incredible difference. I feel for the first time, like I'm not just like drowning in my garden, but I'm actually able to enjoy the garden, look at it and 
maybe even make plans like succession planting was never even on my radar because we were so overwhelmed with weeds every year and now I'm like oh I could maybe do that oh I could actually look into different varieties of plants whereas before it was just like just battling the weeds all the time so happy so here's the unweed matted section of the garden and actually the reason why it's unweeded two reasons one we didn't buy enough weed mat <laughs> we weren't going to spend the money for even more weed mat especially since we didn't know how it was going to work out and then two we're growing things over here that don't need weed mat we'll start all the way down there this is our corn patch i don't know if you can see all of them but they are growing last year we did corn out in the dog pen and raccoons chickens deer everything just ate it <laughs> So this year we're doing it inside the fence and while it won't keep out a deer or really a raccoon probably, it will keep out chickens and we're hoping that it'll be at least a little bit of a deterrent for the other animals. So this is all just sweet corn. These are actually self-seeded. This is my glass gem corn. We're gonna see how that turns out. I just let it grow. I didn't even plant any. We're just banking on these few stems here. Had bigger fish to fry. Pass the corn coming all the way down this way are my sweet potatoes. So everywhere there's a stick is a sweet potato that's planted. They're hard to see, but they are there. And these are grown from slips that were grown from sweet potatoes that we grew last year, which were grown from slips from sweet potatoes we grew the year before. So like once you get rolling, like you just keep propagating off of what you have. So these are all sweet potatoes, and then I have more slips that I'm going to go ahead and finish off this section. I didn't know if I was going to have enough to finish off this section, and we were debating putting more corn, but I think we're going to go ahead and just do the sweet potatoes. So, sweet potatoes, corn, next section over. These are my carrots. They look so good. I'm very happy with them. Um, I showed how I planted the carrots. I just literally took seeds and just kind of threw them down on the ground and they grew. And so this portion right here, this is all going to be carrots as well because this little patch is not enough carrots. <laughs> I need to plant those carrots ASAP. All around here, this is all garlic and it turns out that they're all soft neck garlic. So I didn't remember what I planted. Apparently I planted soft neck. And those were also grown from garlic that we grew the year previously, so. Okay, past the garlic <laughs> is a fail. I tried to plant potatoes and they did not. They did not turn out. I have not had luck planting potatoes yet. I have some really good suggestions to move forward and try again. And I'm just gonna keep trying year after year. I'm just gonna keep trying until it finally works. The only year I actually successfully grew potatoes was the first year I ever did it when I didn't even know what I was doing and they just magically grew and I have not been able to recreate that magic sense. The rest of this, very exciting, except for the part where my husband weed whacked down a plant that I grew, but okay. This is all milkweed and we let it grow for the monarch caterpillars and, and for me because it's beautiful and it smells amazing. I haven't seen any caterpillars on them yet, but it's only a matter of time. I'm pretty sure it'll be soon. I was gonna show you some ground cherries, but they have been weed whacked, so they're not there anymore. These are cherry tomatoes, and I have like at least 100 other cherry tomato plants that have no home and nowhere to go. Hey, get out of there. No, get out of there. Get out of there. What are you eating? Are those my plants? We interrupt this garden tour. Get the chickens away from my plants. Get away. That's not yours. Get away. Get away. Go. No, go. Go. Don't you dare, rooster. None of this is yours. Go away. Shoo. Shoo, 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 shoo. Get. Go. Can you at least pretend to be afraid of me? Go. Don't eat my plants. <coughs> this is why we put a fence around the garden. Because they're rude. Oh, right. We were almost done anyway with this portion. <laughs> Cherry tomatoes. We didn't put them on the fence. I don't know. We just ran out of room. And then these are all Cosmos. And I have a bunch more flowers that I'm going to be putting places. And I mean, there's just always it's constantly more things that I want to put out. I was like, I can't film yet. I haven't finished everything. But like, you're never done 
with everything. So this is the fenced in garden in June. Okay, now we're gonna head over into the dog pen, but first I wanna show you my little like nursery area, I guess you would say, slash compost. This is where all my seeds, I started all my seeds. So there's still buckets full of seedlings of things. This is more Chinese cabbage. Here's some random zinnia, more zinnia. Here's some kale looking horrible. Some more lettuce. These are cherry tomatoes, quite a lot of them. Here's some more tomatoes of various assortment. Flowers started in here and uh, basil, basil and basil and basil. And there's celery that I now have nowhere to put. I, I had a place and then I filled it up with other stuff. So I, there are decisions that need to be made. All right, here we are in the dog pen. First, I want to show you in the chicken coop, I actually planted some pumpkins because I had extra pumpkins. So I just planted them in here. And the chickens will probably tear them up. I don't know if they'll actually grow, but I will say one thing. I dug into this dirt and oh my gosh, right here in this coop, the best dirt on the entire property. And it's probably because I did layers of mulch. Some I threw a bunch of dead leaves in here. The chicken bedding, like the dirt is like gold in there. Okay, so now we're out to the dog pen garden. This is going to be... Well, it's not going to be, it is pumpkins and butternut squash. And that's the only thing I planted in here. This whole half is butternut squash and that half is pumpkins. Planted the Long Island cheese pumpkins like we did last year and the butternut squash just from a package from the store. Looks like I need to water them a little bit. <laughs> so it doesn't look like anything now, but I bet by next month, it's going to look completely different. If you've ever grown pumpkins, you know, like you know how fast they grow and they just cover everything. Just so you know, there is a perennial flower garden over here, but we're not even gonna look at it because it's in bad shape. <laughs> I have not been keeping up on it at all as the food garden has been taking all of my attention. So exciting. Oh my gosh, look. Look, <gasps> I don't know if you were here for blueberry bush. <laughs> we bought blueberry bush and then it lived in a bucket for years. The same bucket we bought it in, it lived in for years. Sadly being sad. And then we finally planted it out and look how happy it is now. It's like, finally I can grow. And there's some blueberries. And I'm gonna eat one because I have not had one. most delicious blueberry ever. Might be a little biased. We need more blueberry bushes, that's it. We only have one blueberry bush. Speaking of berries, we'll give a very quick overview of what's going on with the berries and the fruit trees. The peach trees are having trouble. I don't know if it's just us or if it's just where we are. When we first bought the property, there were actually a bunch of peach trees in here. We had really bad ice storms that killed all of them except for two. They're really old, so they don't produce peaches anyway, but they did all die. And they're not doing good. I don't know if it's the type of peach tree we planted or if it's just we're a little too far north for peach trees. I'm not sure, but blackberries, these are doing well. Won't be long now. So these are all blackberry bushes here against this fence. These are all ones that we actually bought at the store, so they don't have the thorns. A little crunchy. We could use a little more rain. Here are some wild blackberries. They do have thorns, lots of thorns. They are also getting ready to be done. So we will have a lot of blackberries. We actually found some wild raspberry bushes, but they were on the fence. They got chopped down. Oh my. Oh man, yeah, okay. No. We have a bunch of mulberry trees on the property and you passed me one, they're so high. Ah, ah. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I just like dropped it. It's fine. Wow, so good. So it's time to pick mulberries. So currently we have mulberries, blueberries, almost the blackberries, apples. It kind of sounds like it's time. It's almost time to harvest stuff, oh my gosh. Apples. Those are actually really good. <laughs> now I understand why the deer have been coming up here at night. All right, well, thus concludes our 
June garden tour. We still have a bunch of stuff that needs to be planted out. A lot of things are getting ready to be producing and we already have some things that are producing and need to be harvested. So it's about to get really busy. Thank you so much for coming and checking out the garden. How's your garden doing? Let me know.